All right, you guys. It is talk therapy. It is Tuesday, May 5th. For some people, you are celebrating Cinco de Mayo. Um, and we're excited to be on tonight. We have an exciting uh, show for you tonight. I'm Tara T. Stallings. And I'm Melody. Man, and how y'all doing this evening? How y'all doing this evening? Oh. <laughs> I, I, I am in the process of right quick of tagging a few people. I'm okay. sorry. No. Okay, that's fine. So um, a, a lot of you guys, we've been talking about blurred lines. While Melody is tagging people, I'll kind of just go into it. Um, Tonight, we're going to be talking about reevaluating our finances. We're going to be sharing about what our gifts that we're going to have on um, next week. That's going to be sharing some exciting information, some very exciting information. Um, thank you. Um, some very exciting information on how before she turned 50, she retired. She was a single mom, divorcee, and she retired. So we need to talk about reevaluating our finances, reevaluating our finances. So we're going to answer some questions at the end. Go ahead and put them in. We're going to try not to uh, <laughs> answer them in between, but I'm going to go ahead. Are you ready, Melody? I am ready. Okay, I am I'm ready. going to go ahead and let Melody um, introduce, introduce our subject topic today and talk a little bit about our guests that we're going to have on next week. Um, and go into the topic. Okay. Um, well, tonight we're going to be talking about finances again. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about COVID-19 and finances, and we've kind of been leaning more towards the business side of it. But tonight we're going to talk about the personal side of it, looking at your personal finances. Um, so that's what our aim is tonight. And what we're also going to do tonight, if you can, um, hold all questions till the end because we're going to allow time at the end of the show to answer questions because we want to make sure we don't miss um, anyone. But with the personal finance, um, what we're going to be doing also tonight is kind of getting you ready for our guests that we're going to have on next week. Um, some of you are familiar with her because she is a classmate of mine. Um, she currently lives in Ohio, in Ohio, I'm sorry. Her name is Jackie Cummings Kioski. Um, at the end, I'm going to be in the comments. I'm going to put a link on there for a video for you all to go watch hers. And also, if you can go follow her on her Facebook page, because she's got a wealth of knowledge. She is 49 years old. She retired at 49 years old. She's a single mother. She's a divorcee. So she has a lot of information that she can share with you that will help you no matter where you're at in the game, as far as making sure that your future um, is secure. And I, I watched her video last night and I'm just like, well, I need to go back and let me start looking at my 401k and health spending accounts and stuff um, with my employer and make sure that I'm maximizing for the best benefit um, of this. Also, let me add this tidbit about her. And a lot of people can say, well, you can retire a millionaire at 49 or whatnot. Her income, her yearly income was less than six figures. So that's something that really, really stood out to me. Her yearly income was less than six figures. And also, she did not take the minimalist route um, to be able to do this. So she's going to share that on next week. She's going to give us some information on credit, um, what's going on with the CARES Act right now, the COVID-19 CARES Act. She's going to give some information on that. So also be sharing a little bit of information about budgeting, as well as how to handle your 401ks, your Roth accounts, and your health um, spending accounts and whatnot. Because I have, I had to kind of take a look last night and say, you know what, I need to 
log into this website and see where my, you know, where my numbers are actually sitting, especially with everything that's going on and how I can do better and prepare better um, with that. And today, me and Tara, we had some real interesting conversations <laughs> about <laughs> money and I, and I have to admit some of the things and that she was bringing up, I had to sit back and say, well, you know what? I need to really reevaluate what I'm doing because maybe I'm spending a little too much money on certain things. But what I think the root of all of it is, and I say this, is we have to have a different relationship with money. All of it is a mindset, um, a mindset issue. And sometimes we have issues with stuff because we have procrastination. We'll say, well, I can do it later. I've got time. Or we may be stuck in low self-esteem that may be causing us not to be wise with our finances. And some of us are just stuck in fear. So my thing is, is from tonight, take that time and sit down and kind of evaluate where you may fall in that and decide if you want to make a conscious decision because you got to want it. You know, it all starts in your heart. So you got to have a drive and you got to have a heart to want to make the change because we could talk all day long until we blew in the face. But until you make that conscious decision that you want better, and you're, you're not going to take the steps to do it. So, you know, we're going to prep you and you can sit down and you can make the decision. I also urge singles, have that conversation with yourself. Uh, I found myself having a conversation with Melody sitting in a parking lot today on some purchases I had made. And I had that conversation with Melody. If you're married, sit down and have a family meeting about the finances. You know, after the spouses have a, a conversation, then include your children in because it may be a change for them as well. If you are a girlfriend, boyfriend, thinking about marriage, cohabitating, you need to know what each other's goals are. So those are conversations I feel like everyone should have and we should invest and have those conversations. Yes. Um, before we get started, you are popping tonight, girl. <laughs> oh, I love that you. head wrap and I love that lipstick. I just want to throw that shout out because I think <laughs> we don't celebrate. We as African-American women, we do not celebrate ourselves enough. And I just want to let you know you popping tonight, girl. You popping tonight. Well, well thank you. You, <laughs> you know. You your flesh shirt on and you blessing the people tonight. You blessing them tonight. <laughs> thank you, Tara. <laughs> yes, yes, thank yes. You. Um, so, yeah, we just have to, I think, Melanie, you said it before. You said it again tonight. We have to change our relationship with finances. Um. And I'm so excited about our guest that's coming on next week. Um, and we're hyping her up because we want you to go to her page. But let's talk tonight about what can we do? What does changing our relationship with money and finances, what does it look like? Because we can, see, when we hear the word change, we can change. I always say you can level up or you can level down. So when you change your relationship, are you changing that relationship for to advance, increase, or are you gonna change that relationship to decrease? So what we have to kind of reevaluate how we look at money. We had some interesting conversations, <laughs> some very interesting conversations, um, especially, and I think it's kind of prevalent. Um, our talk show is uh, Let's Talk, talk Therapy and real raw and relevant and let's be real let's be raw let's keep this thing relevant because we as especially in the era that we're in it's all about the look it's mm -hmm. all about the perception and a lot of us men and women uh, you know equally but I think us as African-American women we get caught up and then African-American men we get caught up in having this certain we want to have this certain perception about ourselves and a certain look, which causes us not to always match our finances. Now, if your finances and your perception and your look matching together, great. <laughs> but if you, it's great. But if you living in an apartment, driving a Maserati, 
uh, you might need to change that. If you live in an apartment, your car costs more than your house. You got watches, Rolls Royce, uh, Ro Ro Rolex watches, um, and things that, and you have no money in your account. You know, you have, it's, and I, look, let me just throw this disclaimer because I like, love, nice things. I like, <laughs> I like the final things in life. <laughs> I like the final things in life. But then it comes a time that we have to reevaluate. We have to re, and I think with this pandemic, it has really caused me to re reevaluate um, my finances and my future as it relates to my relationship with money. And and that's so true. And and you ask the question: Are we leveling up or are we leveling down? I think that depends on the individual and where they may find themselves. Now, let me explain this when I say that. Um, some of us, our finances are where we can level up. Overall bottom line number, credit score, bank accounts, or whatnot, we are at a place where we can level up. Some of us, our income to actually factually, honestly deal with our income, we need to level down so mm -hmm. we can increase our top line dollar amount so we can fully level up. So it just depends on where the individual is. And we're gonna go over some budget percentages and that'll kind of help you decide what you need to do. Because some of us, whether you, you know it or not, are actually living outside of our means. Mm -hmm. If we actually get into the budget and really look at those percentiles, we're maintaining, but we're actually outside of, we're living outside of our means because in our maintaining, we're not properly preparing for the future. And not only are we doing ourselves an injustice, we're also doing our children uh, an injustice. We're also yes. doing our grandchildren an injustice because we're not preparing for them. We don't have anything really to offer them without sacrifice. Let me say that without sacrifice at this point. So it depends on where we are individually. And I think a lot of times um, I've seen my, with my observation, we think because we have a lot of things and stuff that we're prosperous. Um, we have a lot of um, cars. We have a lot of nice furniture. We have a lot of clothes. We have a lot of shoes. We have a lot of purses. We think that that equates to wealth when in just an instant, all of that can be gone. We can have, you know, a, 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 a hurricane come through, a tornado, a tree. All of that stuff can be gone, a fire. All of that can be gone in an instant. We don't, I think we don't, as a people in a, in, in a whole, collectively, we don't look at the entire spectrum of what prosperity and wealth is outside of things and stuff. And I think that goes back from my observation to that perception of, I look like a million dollars. You know, you wanna look like it, but do you actually have it? Well, I think a lot of that has, has to do with our culture. I'm gonna say it like that. It has to do with our culture and, and the way that we were raised and some things were instilled in us and some things that we were taught. And I think now is the time to flip that mm -hmm. and, and to come out of that mindset. And as I stated earlier, even evaluate what is causing us to have that mindset. Because a lot of that is you're basing your self-worth on the outside. Mm -hmm. That means your peers control your value when you should be the person that's actually controlling your value. And I'm gonna give an example of that. Like you said, when we, let me say this. I, I like the nice things, don't get me wrong. I like the finer things, but I think everything should be in its perspective place. So if I have $3,000 in the bank, Y'all know I like Louis Vuitton. I'm not going to Louis Vuitton and spend 2000 on a bag 
and only leave me a thousand in the bank. My bank number really does not represent that I need to be carrying that Louis Vuitton because with me carrying it, I should be able to have more than what I spent to put in it. So some people purchase certain items because to them, other people say, oh, you got it going on. Life must be good. When actually you at home and you eat a bologna sandwich every day so you could drive a Mercedes. <laughs> yeah. Or and either. Yes. Or I can take it a little further. Or you've conned and manipulated other people so that you could drive that. But other people that don't know what you've done have the perception, oh, you got it going on. You so smart. You, and that's not true. So you're not even being true to yourself. Anytime something causes you stress, be it whether the outside your peers are controlling um, your, your self-worth or either you're having to be manipulated to make your self-worth look something, it could cause some type of anxiety, um, stress, and actually a depression because sometimes we could try to cover depression with a mask. So we have to be get to a point where we're comfortable with who we are and be able to abide in and out of season. Yes. Because this thing of life will have you in season and out of season. But the thing is, is knowing how to balance it out and be able to still maintain in either season. Yes, I totally agree. I totally agree. So with all that being said, how, what... For our listeners, um, for our listeners, how do we change our relationship with money? How do we do that? Especially if culturally we have been instilled, a lot of us, from either our parents, mother, aunt, those people that influence us, or just by our, our um, close-knit people that we hang around as adults. We have been molded into a mindset, into a relationship with money that's not productive in the, in the sense of gaining wealth. It's, it's productive in, in the sense of gaining, um, I got feedback, and gaining things and stuff, but not, but not wealth. I'm going to say simple as this. Look at how how somebody else mindset where has it actually got been um and with that some of us can look as close as our parents or whatnot and the mindset that they had with money and how they handle finances um we can look at that and let that be a, a gauge on oh i need to make a change because i don't want to end up like this then begin to educate yourself. Um, that phrase is so true. If it's, if it's in a book, they can hide it from us. Um, that's very true. But yeah. he, even if you don't even want to read a book, we've got so much technology. I, you know, you do have so much technology um, that you don't even have to read a book. There's audible books. There's YouTube. Um, there's podcasts. You've got to open your horizons up to something new. And to even do that, you still, it all goes back. You've got to make a conscious decision that you want to do better. And this can be no matter where you find yourself at financially. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you got zero in the bank, educate yourself. So when you do get something in the bank, whether well, it's five, $10, You'll know how to handle that five or ten dollars responsibly. So just begin to take a look around sometimes at some of the people and be like, well, I don't want to end up like that. I need to make a change. Then start educating yourself. There are financial coaches out here. Like I said, you got YouTube. We walk around with thousand dollar phones in our hand. It's got the Google app on there. Google it if you need it. I mean, but I, you know, I'm not I'm not saying it to be funny. But this is what we need to start doing. We spend the money on these phones and stuff. Make the phone work for us. Don't work for the phone. Find, yeah. Use it to get the information that you need. 
you got to ask Siri, ask Siri. <laughs> She's going to return with something, <laughs> you know, for, because even, and I'm, I'm going to keep it transparent. I'm going to be real. Even in watching Jackie's um, video that she sent me on last night, I was like, wait a minute, Melody. Okay. Now you, your job offers the health spending account, but you're going with a different health account that you've got a card that you're actually using each month. Maybe you need to go over to the other spending account and not be so quick to spend money on that card. So those are things she's going to talk about. We just got to make a conscious decision to want better. Yeah, I truly agree with that. Um, I know we, we were talking earlier and I shared, you know, a few years back after my mom passed, I had to change my relationship with not just money, but how I spent my money. Um, my mom was a great finance. My mom could save money. My mom, could, she was a saver. But at the same time, she had four walk-in closets full of packed of shoes, pocketbooks, and clothes that you couldn't walk in. So when she <laughs> passed, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with all this stuff? You know, um, and seeing that growing up, you know, her thing was don't be, don't wait to get ready, always be ready. And just hearing that, even though now I heard that a lot, you know, in my life, um, pay yourself first, but we seem to more is caught than it is taught. Let me say that mm -hmm. when it comes to people learn from what they see, not from what they, what you say. So as growing up, you know, I start doing what my mom always buy stuff on sale, get, I like nice stuff. I saw her, you know, we shot that boutiques when I was growing up. So, you know, when I grew up, I wanted, I did this, I kept the same lifestyle. I had the money to buy it. I was going and getting it. And then when my mom passed, she had all these, all these clothes, you guys, I mean, clothes, shoes, purses, belts, jewelry, all kind of stuff. And I was like, I will, I, I told myself then, I will not die with that many, with that, with four closets full of clothes packed that I, I had a yard sale and sold a lot of that stuff. But can you imagine the wealth if, if, she, if I could have took that stuff back to the store, how much money I could, you know, I could have made off of it or she could have had off of it. And it, it made me reevaluate myself. Even a few years ago, um, I had a yard sale. I cleaned out my closets. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I had so much stuff. But I told myself, I'm not keeping all this stuff. I don't need it. I had, you know, me being a, a, a African American woman, you know, in that pocketbook, and I shared that earlier, you know, got to have <laughs> everyone. Birch came out, Coach came out, Michael Kors came out, Louis came, look, I had Louis and Gucci in high school because it was popular, and you know, stuff. so I, had, you know, so all those purses, so they come out, you want to get them, you just, oh, you got one a different color, you got a big one, you got a bad one, you got a backpack, you got all these three, four, five, six, fifteen hundred dollar purses in your closet for what? Just to say I have them, so when you walk out there, you say, oh, girl, that's a shop. That's a bad bag. <laughs> so I got, I sold a lot of that stuff. I sold that stuff for a little bit of nothing. And I was sharing with you earlier. I, um, for a long time, I was just carrying a little $16 pouch <laughs> in one of my school bags. That was my purse. Unless I pulled out, you know, if I was going somewhere. And I, last year, actually, I went to New York, um, for the New York half with, to watch some of my friends run. And my friend had this cute little black, well, it's a medium sized tote. I was like, oh, where did you get that tote? She was like, girl, this tote was $5. I think she got it from Target. I said, oh, that's so cute. She bought me the $5 tote. Y'all, I still carry that $5 tote right now. Inside of doing in Burt bag, a tote bag, Cause I got, cause it was bigger. That was the only reason I had, cause I've been trying to get that doing in Burt. Matter of fact, I got that from somebody that I told them, I look, I couldn't find it. And when they was like, I'm not using it anymore. I got it from then. It's not, it's, but I carry this $5 tote bag. 
five dollar bag, and I'm content with it because Melody, like you said, think the stuff don't make us, we make it. Don't let the mm-hmm. money make, don't let it rule us. We have to rule over it. So I had to start changing my my relationship with how I view. Now I still like nice stuff, y'all, but I refuse. I refuse me not knocking anybody. Not knocking anybody because my wallet just went out and I was thinking about going to get me a Louis Vuitton wallet. <laughs> Till I look at that price. That's why I ain't going to buy no Louis Vuitton. Well, I went on Amazon and I saw one for $23. <laughs> <laughs> I saw me a cute one for $23, y'all. Because if, if anybody know my little bags that I have, I have them stuffed in with paper and pencils and all that <laughs> stuff and be written up. P- ink pen stains on it and i said i would not spend that money on a purse for me for the, the zip of the bus out of it because i'm an old stuff no 23 dollars another part another wallet little thing 23 dollars i was like no so i had to change my relationship with money so that i can have money i can rest and i'm not 70 years old so I can get, I can't rest right now. I'm doing a lot of stuff. Can't rest quite, not quite yet, but I don't want to be old, you know, saying, oh, I'm living a good life. I still want to be young, um, vibrant, and I plan on being cute at 70. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? So I had to change that. I had to change that, that, um, that relationship with money and make my money work for me and me stop working for, so hard for my money. I still work hard for my money, but not for the same reason. I'm not in the same relationship that I was in 15 years ago. Let me say that. Or 10 years ago, let me say that, yeah. <laughs> and you, uh, I'm glad you were talking about, cause we, we had, when I say we had some interesting conversations today, we had some interesting conversations today um, about money because I, you know, I had to have a conversation with Melody. I said in the parking lot, I said, now Melody, did you really need that? Did you need to spend that money? But in sharing with Tara, you know, and I'm going to say this because she said, well, you know, you're going to have to be delivered. And I was honest because sometimes you got to be honest with yourself. I said, well, Tara, I ain't going to tell you I'm ready for that deliverance. <laughs> So we're not going to pray that prayer, not quite yet. But see, you have to make your mind up. I'm yeah. better than what I used to be. I'm going to say that. Because I was a shopper. I didn't care what had to be paid. <laughs> if I wanted it, I wanted it. And I got it. Oh, I'm so, so much better now. But anyway, we were also talking about groceries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I was like, you know, and she gave me the number of what she spent each week on groceries. And I'm like, I got to be doing something wrong. <laughs> and, and I'm not just talking COVID-19 groceries, because I was spending this before on groceries, but still going out to eat. And we have stuff in the, in the refrigerator. And I would still go to the grocery store, just like, you know, I don't have none in my refrigerator, but I'm going to the grocery store. Um, and I was like, well, maybe I need to change. Yeah, because I told you my number per week is what, like $150? Mind you, basically, it's just me. Uh, occasionally, <laughs> well, my son now. So, <laughs> but, you know, I'm spending $150 a week or so, more and more, on groceries. And then still eat out sometimes because I can say, I don't feel like cooking. I just don't have a taste for anything in the refrigerator or I just want such and such. So we've got to have make some adjustments. Let me just say that. And I'm going to have to sit down and make some adjustments <laughs> because that's money, you know, the buying the groceries versus the eating out also, that means I'm spending a lot of money each week in food, groceries, where some of that money I can be socking away somewhere else. And I think this time is a good time to actually go into these budget percentiles because yes. this is something that you're going to do. Um, now, Tari, when we were talking about it, you said that you were given that 
we should, whatever our annual salary is, we should be living off of 40% of that and saving 60. And saving 60, yes. Depending on your salary, um, or either you living off of 60 and saving 40. And I, and I gave the example for um, a two household um, couple or single, somebody making, just say you make $100,000 a year. If you make $100,000 a year, um, you, if you can live off of $40,000 a year and save the 60, if you could do that just for 10 years, just 10 years, if you can save $60,000 for 10 years, that's $600,000. That's $600,000 in 10 years. So in, 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 in 20 years, you're over a million dollars. That's just living off 40. If you start at 25, by the time you 45, you're already, you have saved, not invested. You have saved a million dollars. Half a million, yeah, that's a million dollars. And now let's clarify this. When we say live the your living, what you're living off, mm -hmm. what your, is included in that? That's your if you have rent or mortgage, that's your car payment. If you have a car payment insurance, that's your food, your utilities, that's your um, entertainment, whatever your entertainment is, that's your clothes. And of course, you have like miscellaneous, you got medicine or whatever. So you have to budget all of that in. You have to budget all of that in. And the rest of it, it goes to savings. It goes, you, you give, of course, I always say give your tithes and your offering. If you're going to give 10% tithes, you give 5% offering or however you do it. But do that. And then all of that 60%, that's part of that 60%. And you living off that 40%. Depending on how much money you're making, because now if you're making forty thousand dollars, it's going to be real hard for you to do forty, sixty, and live. So if you're making forty thousand dollars a year, you would do live off of the sixty and save the forty. Now that's some people say, oh, that's going to be kind of tight. Yeah, uh, depends. Depends on because you know, especially listen, September coming, housing interest rates going to be so low. Because people not buying, they're going to have houses, the interest rate, they, they're going to drop the prices and interest rates going to be so low, you're going to be able to get a house, a $100,000 or $150,000 house, you might pay $600 a month for it or less. You know, $150,000 or le even less, probably less than that, depends on, you know. So you want to just, so the stuff is going to change. So you want to be able to live up under your means. You don't have to have, one thing I learned about cars was this, because I like luxury cars, but I drive my little, you know, I, I got to the point, I like, I like cars that run. <laughs> That's good. I just, just crank up, because I make it look good whatever I drive, because, you know, matter of fact, I, I talked about that last week. I like my little Nissan that ain't work, That's not running enough, because $20 will fill that car up, and I like that. I like $20 cars, $20 gas cars. So, if you like luxury cars, nothing wrong with that. But don't go to the car lot. Go get you one that's a year or two old. Let it depreciate so that you're not paying if the car was $60,000. If you wait, and depending on what car it is, because it's going to depreciate, if you wait that same car that you can get, sometimes you can get it with almost a brand new one just like that, with maybe very, very low miles, for instead of paying $60,000 for that car, you can get that car for $40,000. That's a $20,000 cut. If you just wait, let it depreciate a couple of years. Same car. Get your extended warranty on the car. We just have to have a different relationship with money. But we want to know every, every time a new car come out, we got we to gotta have that fresh car paint. I got to have this fresh car. I'm going to look good. I'm going to... Listen, you have to get... Whatever you wear, whatever you have, you make it look good. So you have to change that. So be able to live up under your means. 
And Melody, I know you said this, and I'm gonna let you talk on that. If you have a business, because I have a business, or well, I have a couple of businesses. Um, some of them I'm there, I, I got a couple of them that I'm just getting back up, getting off the ground. Um, so you invest in your business, you you know, you have that money taken out out of your 40%, not out of your 60%, not out of your savings. You take it out. Okay, this is what I can invest in my business. So that means you may have to cut a couple of places. I shared with Melody um, um, earlier today, my cousin was sharing, um, she said that she was just trying, she, off in school, she said she learned how to, one person live off of spending $30 a week at the grocery store. Melody was like, $30? How in the world did she do that? <laughs> but I tried it. I said, well, I'm going to see. Now, mind you, I spent about 40 about $35, $40. But what she did was she only bought what was on sale. Not the staples, because you know, like sugar, water, or sugar, flour, not your staple stuff, just your stuff for the week. So think about it. If you can go to the grocery store, clean out your breakfast, lunch, dinner for the week, buy what's on sale, eat that from Saturday to Saturday, Saturday to Saturday. If you do that for a month, you what you spend in a week. $120 you spend on a whole month for groceries and you still eat it. Don't go out to eat. I'll share with Melody. I, I have a rule now. And I, I've been doing this actually since 91 when I was working with my friend um, uh, Lynn in the beauty salon. We used to go out to eat. And back in 91, I realized we were eating out for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And when I calculated, I spent $71. I know that don't sound like much to y'all, because y'all might be spending a whole lot more than that now. But in 91, five days a week, nine, $70, that was a lot of money. And buying groceries. I stopped it. I take my lunch to work from my food that I cook at home. I take one day out of the week, and I go out to eat one meal. That's my one meal for the week. Now, I've been doing that a while. So, I mean, I have no problem with it because I, you know, I kind of train myself because I got to, I have a goal, you know, I, I have a goal in mind. Do I always, now my, I, I, am I perfect? No, because I have to stay off Amazon. I have, I have stuff. I have to stay off that Amazon thing, that Amazon, the Amazon gift. I have stuff in my cart now that I go back and I have to delete out because I'm just shocked. <laughs> that's, that's a way that you can say, Put yourself on a budget. And, and I'll add this and I'll let you continue with that. Most people don't take their yearly salary. They take their check. So if you make $1,000 a week, if your bring home pay is $1,000 and you can live off of, because you got to look at what you have. You got to look at your spending. You just can't go say, I'm going to live off. You got to look at what you're spending. Because for a while, you may have to live off 2080 until you can pay some bills off. Because you got to pay some bills. So you, if you got overspent your credit card bills, so you get some bills paid off, you want to pay them off, you might have to do 20, uh, 80, 20. But depending on your bills, you may have to downsize. You might have to downsize where you live. You might have to downsize your car. But if you make $1,000 a week, you want to be able to eventually save 600 and live, take that 400, that's going to go towards uh, mortgage, light bill, water bill, gas bill, food. You know, now, if you get married, do that twice. You know, if you got kids, depending on how many kids you have, with all things being equal, you have to add on, you have to add in. But first, before, before you can do anything, is you have, to, you have to add up what's your budget? What are you spending? How much you make? And what are you spending every day? If you take seven days and write down, this is what they tell us when you're trying to lose weight. You write down every time you eat something. You write down every time you spend a quarter. At the end of the week, you'll see how much money you nickel and dime. I mean, every time you go to the gas store to pick up a bag of chips, 
a candy bar, you write everything down. You write every time you spend that money down, you will see where uh, the bulk of your money is going. Melody. <laughs> okay. Tar gave it to you in a yearly perspective. Um, when I talked with a coach, she broke it down to what she calls what to be with a dog. So I'm going to give you the percentiles on how you can sit down per paycheck and, and decide how you're going to give you the money. So y'all need to go get pen and paper because you're going to need to write this down with these percentages because I got to look at them too because it gives a real good breakdown of where your money um, should be and you're going to most definitely need to write this down. And with this, um, but before you do this, I would suggest actually get your pen and paper when you have time and, and sit and write out all your bills. Because um, what I do um, each month, probably the week before coming up to the first of the month, because most of our bills are due on the first, is I sit down and I actually, I have to do a budget. I've gotten so used to it that even, you know, routine bills or some bills don't change for me. They're the set amount. I still have to sit down and plan it out, um, the payments or whatnot for that. So when you get a chance, write down what you're actually spending out, your water bill, your light bill, your gas bill, your cell phone bill, your car insurance, car payment, credit cards, any loans, anything that you have that is going out, write it out and give it a dollar amount. Um, you know, tuitions, kids' activities, include all of that in uh, your grocery and whatnot. So what to do with a dollar? First thing at the top of the list is yourself. So when you get paid and I'm looking at your take home amount, what you're taking home, what's deposited into your bank account, pay yourself 15%. This 15% that you're going to pay yourself, that includes if you want to go shopping, if you want to go out to eat, if you want to get your hair done, your nails done, all of that is going to come out of that 15%. So once you get to look at that 15%, you're going to be like, okay, I need to reevaluate some stuff. You know, maybe I need to go learn how to do my own lashes. You know, maybe I need to learn how to do my own pedicure. Uh, you know, I'm just being realistic. So you give yourself 15%. Number two is your tithe. Your ties are 10%. Now, I know there's some discussion on how you pay your ties, 10% of what? You decide how you want to pay your 10%. Are you going to pay 10% off what you take home or 10% of what it was before taxes? Because people do have a discussion on it, but your ties are 10%. Living, this is why I say a lot of people are living above their means. 25%. So out of your check, 25% of it is going towards living. That is your car note, your mortgage, your rent, your light bill, your water bill, cable bill, all of that. 25% of your check goes towards that. If you are a business owner, 5% should be invested in your business. Now, if you are not a business owner, you can take that 5% and put it in the living expenses. So that'll actually jump your living expense to 30% if you do not have a business. If you have a business, you should be setting 5% aside for your business. Number five is taxes. If you owe any back taxes or anything, 30% should be going to those taxes. If you don't have any outstanding tax debt or whatnot, that 30%, you can take it and you can divvy it up to any of the other percentages that you want to. So if you want to take that 30% and increase your living to 55%, you can. Because a lot of us, we don't owe back taxes or anything. So that 30%, if you want to, you can move all of that towards your living, which then takes you to 55%. Invest 
Invest it however you want to. Bonds, stock, whatever you're going to invest, you should invest 5%. Now, I'm not going to say that's an option because that's something we actually do need to do. Invest that 5%. Number seven is your personal savings. That is 10%. All of this, once you add up the percentages that I gave you, that comes to 100%. That means your whole paycheck has a specific area that it's going to cover. You may have some variances depending if you have a, have a business or if you owe any back tax. So yourself, number one, 15%. Number two is your tithes, 10%. Your living is 25%. If you have a business, you're going to invest 5%. If you do not have a business, that 5% from the business investment is to go to the living. It's not to go anywhere else in there. It's to go to the living. Now, if you have taxes, 30% of it should go to those taxes that you owe. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. But if you don't have any back taxes or owe any taxes or anything, then that 30%, you can take it and divvy it up however you would like in the different percentiles. Invest 5%. I'm not going to say that's an option because we all should be investing in something. So invest the 5%. Your personal savings account, the last thing, 10%. Again, all that's going to add up to 100%. That covers your whole paycheck. It has specific direction. So it doesn't matter if you're starting off with a $300, $400 paycheck versus somebody with a $1,000 paycheck. What you're doing is you're training your mind to give everything a specific direction. I don't care if you only put in a dollar somewhere or two dollars somewhere. Don't look at the number because what it, what's more important is you're training your mind. Um, when me and Tara were talking earlier, she had made a statement about something where um, a lot of us say, oh, if I ever hit the lottery or if I ever get a large amount of money, I'm going to start doing this and I'm going to help this and I'm going to help do that. But if you're not putting yourself in a position now to do it, you're not going to do it later on. So the best thing now is to get your mind trained for it. Get yourself in position for it. So that's a breakdown of what you can do with a dollar. And I think that's a pretty simple one. It's not a very hard one. Like I say, it doesn't matter where you fall at on the line of it, you can. Now, I want to give one more thing. That 30% on taxes, if you are someone that has a lot of debt, because you'll see that this equation does not have anything formulated in there for debt. And that was one of my questions to her. What about when you have debt? You just can't forget that debt that you have. If you don't have past taxes or anything, take that 30%. Look at your debt. And let's start paying that debt down with that 30%. I know it may be hard. It may be a struggle. But in the long run, it's going to make it so much better for you. So much easier for you. So that 30%, instead of divvying it up somewhere else, take it and work on your debt that you may have. And a lot of us, um, we don't even know what our credit score is. Find out what your credit score is. Find out what is actually on your credit report. Let's be real. Some of us haven't pulled our credit report because we, we just don't want to see how we done messed up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we just don't see want to see how we messed up and it may not actually be as bad as you may think it is um was it last year or was it year before last there were some changes with the credit score system um some of us actually saw a slight increase in our credit scores and i have to say um 
right before COVID-19, because I do monitor my credit. I, I was, and you know, I had shared with Tar, wait a minute, I'm getting alerts that my credit going, <laughs> going up. So, you know, in the last few months, um, I have seen my credit go up substantially. So even with that, see where you actually stand. Husband and wives, you need to know where each other stands. Mm -hmm. Significant others, if you are in a home together, married or not married, you need to know where each other stands. Because to me, there's a commitment there and there's a commitment to grow. And you can't grow with somebody if you don't know what they're doing. And you all may be headed in two separate directions. Because we do know one of the biggest problems in relationships is finances. Right. And I think some of it comes from the lack of conversation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a scary conversation. Some of us are scared to tell our partners what our credit score is because we're thinking, oh, they're going to walk away. But if they truly there for the right reasons, let's, let's just say that. You all should be able to work it out. Wow, Melody. Look, talk, share with our audience, with our, um, our guests that we're going to have on next week, because our time is just about up. And tell, share, <laughs> share with them how they can go and um, find her on her Facebook page so that they can be um, ready to hear how this woman, African-American, single mom, divorced, retired at 59 years old. 49. I mean, 49, yes, at 49 years old. <laughs> and she retired, and she didn't start early. She started in her late 30s, she said. She started, you know, getting her, her finances together, she said, in her late 30s. So she, she wasn't doing this from age 20. This was in her late 30s. And she retired last December at the age of 49. Um, her name is Jackie Cummins, and I hope I'm not butchering her name, Ki Kioski. Uh -oh. Okay, I thought I lost you for a minute. Yeah. Jackie, mm -hmm. okay. Jackie Cummins Kioski is her name. And she's on Facebook by, um, I'm going to put a link in the comments when the show is over, where you can go watch a video um, one of her videos where she was doing a um, doing a speech where she was a facilitator and she was talking about um, some of the things that she did to get to the point where she is. She's been on CNN, she's been Forbes magazine, she's been on um, CNN for people.com. So she has actually done it like um, Tara said. She's 49, single mother, divorcee, and she did not start early in life. Um, she actually had to go through some stuff. She wasn't raised with a whole lot of money or whatnot, but she made a decision that she wanted better in the steps that she took. And another thing, she did not do it the minimalist way. Um, she, she tells you, hey, I've got a comfortable home. I like the luxury cars of whatnot and she she's giving you the meat mm -hmm. on how she did it so be prepared next week bring your pen and your paper um uh, you're gonna need to make from, some Melody. tell them where she's from. oh yeah she's right here from aiken county because we were classmates that's why i said at the beginning some of you all may be familiar with her she's in ohio now but she is homegrown um one of her statements tonight is i'm i'm happy to be able to give something back to my community. So that's why I'm so excited that she's going to be on next week. But she's right from right here, New Ellington, South Carolina, Aiken, South Carolina, because we went to school together. So a lot of you are familiar with her. And you need to hear her story. It lets you know that if you put your mind to it, you can do it. And I'm going to drop a link in the comments once the show is over, where you can go take a look at a video um, with her speaking on the steps that she did for her retirement. Okay. Do we have any questions, Tara, coming through? So if anybody has any questions, you can go ahead and drop those in the comment right quick and we'll um, take a few minutes to answer those. 
All right, because we don't, as of now, we don't have any questions. Um, we just got a, a few statements, um, but no, no questions. But if you have some, just we'll give you a minute or two to type them in. Um, we do have some statements, but no comments right now. So yeah, I'm excited for her next week. I'm excited because um, so often we hear stories, we see people, but they don't look like us. Mm -hmm. And when they don't look like us, we don't think it's a, it's achievable or, or attainable because, oh, that's them. They were born with a silver spoon. They probably have this. It's good to be able to see someone that looks like us, that's not old, you know, that has um, achieved wealth and retirement and and wasn't and wasn't you know was to have a had a, her career she didn't make a hundred thousand dollars she made eighty thousand dollars a year yeah her 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 annual income was under six figures yeah and, and we we've got some people watching that are six figures or above you know but can't retire at 49 mm -hmm. so you know, it's something to, something to think about. Um, also, another thing I just want to um, drop. If you're planning to watch next week, and I, and I really hope that you're planning on watching, before next week, you may want to take a look at, you know, the standing on your 401k, your Roth um, RA, your health spending accounts. Because most of these, you know, some of these are employer-based. Look at what you're contributing to those um, and what they're matching you at. Because all jobs don't match at the same rate. Um, you may want to look at that and maybe know your numbers as to where you stand with those accounts. Yeah. I don't think we have any questions. So until next week, like Melody said, she's going to put the link at the back at the end um, in the comment section of this broadcast. Make sure you like and share. Make sure you go to her page. And make sure you tune in next Tuesday for Talk Therapy, Sister Let's Talk, because we're going to have a guest on and we're going to continue this conversation. Right. All right, you guys, you have a wonderful week. Be safe. Listen, be safe and social distance, still social distance. <laughs> make right. Don't just go <laughs> all willy nilly. Be prayerful. Have a good week. Y'all have a good one.